Well, hello 403 people. We're try this video sequence again. I just filmed all of them and then noticed half of my stuff did not fit on the page right. So I'm going to try to reproduce what I just reproduced, uh, taking the last couple hours. So here's fun. We're going to deal with inductors we did in class today. Actually, I guess it's yesterday now. Um, we dealt with capacitors. Now we're going to deal with inductors. So um, this is our symbol for an inductor. I, it's kind of the old style way. I think it's kind of a little prettier on it, but uh, not so practical. Drew gives you the idea that you've coiled wire, wire around in a loop to make the inductor that goes on. Um, energy is then stored in the field as created as you run current through this. Um, and as the current field changes, you call, or as the current goes through here, the field, um, the electromagnetic one generates in here, the field will expand or contract, and that's actually where your energy is stored. So anyway, take our inductor, the measure of uh, what the resistance is to changes in current is L. Um, L actually comes from uh, Lentz, who was... Uh, one of the scientists who worked on this in the early 1800s, and it's measured in Henry's. So, okay, that's kind of the background stuff. Now, when we have a voltage drop across this, um, realize that if, if the current is constant, the voltage drop will be nothing because it just is like a wire that's laying there. But assuming that the current is changing, there will be a voltage drop. So we expect voltage to somehow be proportional to changes in the current okay again if if the current is constant so this is zero then the voltage drop is zero it's just a wire and the proportionality constant is l which is the inductance which again is a measure of the resistance to this whole thing okay now what we want to do is be able to figure out some basic properties about these we want to know for instance let's say um, what is the inductance in series so let's assume we have some source and we are now going to get a series and to draw that a little prettier um, maybe that's hopeless at this point now I'll try to draw the rest of them nice looking l1 l2 l3 all right so we're going to use our standard um, some of the voltages around a loop is equal to zero. I always pick this to be my ground point, just as habit. There's my current I. So doing this, I can now say, uh, following Kirchhoff's voltage law, that Vs has to be equal to, and now I've got the voltage drop across L1, but the voltage across an inductor is just its inductance L1 times how the current is changing and then I have in addition voltage drop across this one second one which is L2 di dt and I have the third one of course which is just L3 di dt okay now we can take this and I Note these are all the same. I factor them out. So I get L1 plus L2 plus L3. And that's DI DT. Um, so if you look at what we've got going on here now, this in essence looks like it's a new kind of LT. Right? Times some DI DT. And that's actually what we're going to consider it. What you notice then is that this L total for them is just equal to the sum of the others. Now, if you think about this, this so this is kind of your um, uh, voltage law result, which you know just comes from Maxwell's equations that they add in series. Intuitively, why does this make sense? Well, think about it this way. You've got L1 is really some, you know, coiled up piece of wire that's coming along. And then I've added in an additional one with L2. So you kind of expect, I've just added extra terms in, you know, turns in this, how many wire loops are there. 
So it kind of makes sense that, you know, add more turns on it. Your um, inductance is proportional to the number of turns. Add more turns, a longer inductor, you would assume that it's going to have more resistance against it. And away we go. Um, same thing when I add L3 in, just keeps increasing. So it makes sense that they would add in this way. So that is a reasonable term as it goes. Now, uh, how about the uh, next part of this whole thing? Now we want on the next one to consider what happens when they're in parallel. Now parallel we usually consider a current source, and we'll call it IS, because right, now we're going to want to do the node law, and I've got an inductor, and we need a second one. All right, this is L1, this is L2. So now, we need to consider the same basic equation we had before, but remember, all right, we had that V is equal to all right, L times DI DT. Um, now when I'm dealing with node, we just consider this our reference one, um, we need to take a look at currents and all the currents flowing in this, but I've got derivative currents. So the way I can handle that is I can integrate both sides. And now when I integrate, I can pull the L out and I integrate this and, you know, with respect to time on both sides. So I just end up with integral V times dt and that's got to be equal to L times I. I, now I can divide both sides by 1 over L, and I've got an expression for I. So now I know what the current that flows through an inductor, so I know what's going on here. It's related to the voltage drop. But this is some voltage V up here that we have to solve for. This is 0, so the voltage drop is just V minus 0, so it's just V. So I'm back to this equation. So I've got, in essence, working off here, my I source has to be equal to the current through inductor 1, which is 1 over L1, integral of the voltage V times dt, and I've also got a second current flow, which is 1 over L2 times the integral of V dt. Again, it connects the same nodes, they're in parallel, so it's the same voltage drop. I can therefore factor this out. So I end up with 1 over L1, 1 over L2, times the integral of the voltage dt. Um, now, just a little note on this. Um, I haven't specified limits of integration here. Now, because that's because there's really a couple options, and it didn't matter for this kind of derivation that's on here. Because all I really needed was to look at this and note that this is, you know, in essence, my 1 over LT and then just say, hey, look, that means that 1 over LT, the new kind of combined inductor, is just equal to 1 over L1 plus 1 over L2, which means we can also write it. The book always loves to give you little formulas like this, just, you know, invert both sides. You get 1 over 1 over L1 plus 1 over L2. So that's the type of stuff you see in there. But to get back to my point on this, um, I haven't specified limits of integration here because you really have two options. I could do this as from 0 to t, some t that I'm going to a v dt. But if I do that, then I've got to actually consider on this, right? Um, so I've got my 1 over L. There's some initial condition plus i at 0 that's going on. And um, now, that gives me what was the current state of it, what was the current flowing through it at that time. It gives me a way of, of figuring out what's going on with the current due to the field. Now, the other way I could do this is I could just say, well, forget that. Um, I can have my 1 over L, and I can now integrate from minus infinity to T, assuming that I can handle that. Um, you know, they converge all that kinds of good stuff. So, but assuming I could, now this swamps in that term and I don't have to worry about it. Um, but it kind of depends on what information I have. Do I have information about negative time, you know, which, you know, from minus infinity to zero is accounted for in here in this initial condition. So that's kind of how you consider and think on those. Now, I always like to give you some intuition to think about why this works. 
Remember that when you're adding like this, in essence, you get less. The reason is because I've got current, and it's the changing current that actually is stored in these fields. And L is a measure of resistance. Well, if I got two of these in parallel, I've got less resistance to the current flowing through here or current changing because it can go through both of them. This is kind of akin to thinking of um, your inductor. Number of coils increases your inductance, but the thicker the wire actually decreases it because it's easier for the current to flow through it. So while L is proportional to the number of turns, L is inversely proportional to the area of the wire that goes on. And so you can kind of think of this as kind of like having, you know, a thicker wire going on, and, you know, it's really two wires, but it's a bigger cross-sectional area that things can flow down, which means that it should decrease or a one over A relation. So that's actually giving you the idea of, of cross-sectional area for the current to flow. So that gives you your information on the inductance, and I'll have to make another video, presuming this one looks decent, um, on how to do this with op-amp circuits. So hopefully all this fits, and things are good. Bye.